What do you do with an original Xbox that you find cheap at a thrift store? Convert it into a badass emulation device. I found this little beauty at a local store for $10. OG Xboxes in stores isn't uncommon. They are pretty cheap and easy to find, especially in North America. But I've passed on many systems in stores as they were clearly in poor condition. The trick is making sure that they work. This one here is decent, but turning it upside down, you can tell that it's never been opened, which means unless it was soft modded, it's never been tampered with or chipped. Again, that's not a bad thing, but it's usually a better sign that things will work. So why do we still care about the original Xbox in 2019? The simple answer is that they still make excellent emulation boxes even to this day. Yes, I am aware that you can use a Raspberry Pi or a PC or some modern hardware. What makes the system so good is that you also get a massive library of original Xbox games to play, many of which are exclusive to the system and haven't featured on backward compatibility on the Xbox 360 or on the Xbox One. But what about the Xbox emulator on the PC, I hear you ask? See, XBX Reloaded is making great strides, but it's fair to say that it still has a long way to go to be considered something that many people would use to replace original Xbox games. It's still very impressive and worth checking out if you want to see how much original Xbox emulation has improved over the last 18 months. That's a story. Head over to the scene. And hey, it's an original Xbox, the console that started the homebrew and emulation revolution in the first place. So let's get started. The first thing is, this system is filthy, so let's clean it up. Even with cleaning products, it looks like someone has tried to take a magic eraser to it and taken some of the plastic off. Still, all things considered, this Xbox is in pretty decent shape. Now, of course, the next thing we want to do is plug it in and actually see if it works. For the first thing that I try is to plug in a regular composite signal into a CRT and turning on the Xbox, yep, it boots up and gets to the dashboard, which is a great sign. Incidentally, the previous owner was a gamer. There's a ton of saves on here and I don't notice anything that indicates the system was ever soft modded either. Now the next thing I test is the DVD drive. This works too. I tested it out with Quantum Redshift, no trouble at all. This is an awesome game incidentally. Check it out if you are a fan of Wipeout style racing games. I test each of the controller ports and yes, they all work fine. And finally, I test an HD cable to make sure that the video scaler is working and it can boot into widescreen and higher resolution modes. Now normally when you buy a used Xbox from a garage sale or a thrift store, there's the potential for it to have issues. Now the good news is this Xbox that I picked up has no issues whatsoever. The DVD drive works, the hard drives work, it boots games, everything looks to be in order. So now we're going to go ahead and perform a soft mod on this device. Now in the past, I would have recommended we utilize something like the SID soft mod installer, which is the soft mod installer deluxe method, but that has been superseded by a newer method known as the Rocky 5 soft mod. Now I'm going to go ahead and install the Rocky 5 soft mod onto this Xbox and show you how it's done. But I will say, if you want a comprehensive end-to-end -end look at the Rocky 5 installer for your original Xbox, check out Mr. Mario 2011's video that I will have a link in the description below. It covers all aspects of the Rocky 5 soft mod and it's a comprehensive guide and one that I definitely recommend you guys check out. So onto the soft mod. With your PC, navigate to github.com slash rocky5 and then select the Xbox soft modding tool project. From here, select clone or download and download the zip file. It's about 600 megabytes in size. Now what you want to do is extract the contents of that zip file somewhere onto the file system. It doesn't matter where. Now you should end up with a folder called Xbox soft modding tool master. Inside this folder, find and double click the batch file build soft mod zip. This will package up the soft mod files for you and you should end up with a zip file called Xbox soft modding tool. Double click on this file and select the folder soft mod package and drag to extract this folder only onto your Windows file system. Now inside this folder, you will notice the zipped up save files for each of the soft moddable games. In this episode, we are going to use MechWarrior, but of course, Splinter Cell, 007 Agent Under Fire and Tony Hawk can also work. In the soft mod package folder, right click and extract all the files. You will notice that it creates a folder called UData, which contains all the save files. 
Now from here we need to insert an Xbox formatted USB flash drive. The first thing to mention is not all USB flash drives will work. In my experience with these devices, an older, smaller size device like a 2 gig or a 4 gigabyte one seems to be more compatible than the larger ones. This one is a 4 gigabyte Kingston and works fine for me and it's one that I've used for years. Now there's two ways to format a USB key to work on the Xbox. The first is to insert it into the Xbox and it should prompt you to format the device if it's supported. The other method is to use a program on a PC called USB FATX Formatter. If neither of these methods work, try another USB key. It really is trial and error until you find the right one. Now that you have your USB key formatted and inserted into your PC, it may ask you if you want to format the device. Please cancel and then go ahead and run Explorer 360. With the Xbox formatted USB key inserted, select Drive, Open, then Hard Drive or Memory Card. You will see Partition 0 displayed on the left. Go ahead and click on it. Now back in Windows Explorer, select each folder inside the UData folder individually, then drag them into Explorer 360, one at a time. And when you're done, you should see five folders on your USB drive. Remove the USB drive from your PC and insert it into the Xbox controller port. In order to do this, you will need an Xbox to USB female cord. They are cheap and easy to pick up on eBay. Now on the Xbox, onto the dashboard, select memory, then select the controller port that you plugged your USB key into. I've already copied all of the softmod files onto the hard drive previously, but I'll show you how to do it here. Since we're running Mechasalt exploit, select Mechasalt save game, then select copy. This will copy the save file onto the Xbox hard disk. Now scroll down to the Xbox soft modding tool file and copy the contents of this file over to the Xbox hard drive as well. After around 30 seconds, this should complete. Now with that, we're all ready to perform the soft mod. Now with a copy of Mechasol, insert it into the Xbox. Now in the main menu, select Campaign and there should be a profile called Run Linux. Select this and with any luck, it will boot into the soft mod. Now press A to allow the soft mod to install the exploit and dashboard to the hard drive. Now just follow the on-screen instructions. The Xbox will reboot automatically and do some additional patching and after a few short moments, you will be in the custom dashboard. Now one thing I should mention is that this is a revision 1.6 Xbox, which was the last revision ever developed developed by Microsoft. So now that we've soft modded our Xbox with the Rocky 5 soft mod method, the next thing that I would normally do is remove the clock capacitor. Now to do this, you need to determine what revision motherboard you have. Now we've already determined that this version motherboard is the 1.6 revision Xbox. Now normally in a 1.0 to 1.5 revision Xbox, it is recommended, strongly recommended, that you remove the clock capacitor as soon as possible. It can cause leaking on the motherboard and irreparable damage as the acid can literally eat away at the traces of the motherboard. The good news is we have the 1.6 revision Xbox, which has a different style of clock capacitor. So we do not need to open up the Xbox motherboard in order to remove the clock capacitor in the 1.6 motherboard. Now that we have the Rocky 5 soft mod installed, the first thing that I would recommend to do is change the skin to the default Unleash X dashboard skin that you're probably used to. Now we can start getting emulators on the device. In order to do this, you will need to connect your Xbox to your network via wired ethernet and use an FTP program on your PC to transfer files to it. I would recommend WinSCP. So now we need to get Xbox emulators and homebrew installed on our original Xbox. Now normally what I would do is download the emulators and homebrew from XBMC and FTPM over to the Xbox, but there is a cool new tool called the XBMC Emu Station that's been out for about a year and a half now, and it's also been developed by Rocky5. And this is a really cool and easy front end to get your favorite emulators and ROMs installed on your Xbox and make it this pimped out emulation station. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how it works. So let's get some emulators installed. Navigate to github.com slash rocky5 once again, but this time select the XBMC Emustation project. This is a custom app for XBMC that's a front end for many Xbox emulators and it's really awesome. Setting this up is straightforward. The instructions on the page are very clear and concise. What we need to do is download the XBMC emustation files, as well as the latest version of XBMC for Xbox. Both are linked on the page. Now on your PC, extract the contents of XBMC emustation to anywhere on the file system. 
and then open up the XBMC for Xbox archive and extract the XBMC folder into the folder named XBMC Emmy Station Master. Now double click on the build XBMC Emmy Station .bat file and it will build a new folder called XBMC Emmy Station. Now FTP this folder over to your Xbox. I'm installing this in the E partition under applications, so Unleash X will pick it up on reboot. Once it's FTP'd over, you also will need to provide some ROMs and emulators. For the ROMs, you will need to FTP them into the .emustation slash ROMs folder. There are folders for many different types of systems, and it's important that you put the correct ROMs in the correct folders. XBMC emustation comes pre-installed with some emulators, but not all. Now there's two ways to install new emulators. Rocky5's page has a link to all the emulators that's supported. So let's say we wanted to install a Commodore 64 emulator, Vice X. We would download it from Rocky5's page, then extract it into the .emustation slash emulators slash C64 folder. The first time you run XBMC Emustation, it will do some initial setup for us, but you will notice that it won't scan the ROMs that we installed for us. So what we need to do is press the white button, then select other settings, then select auto scan systems. This will rescan the ROMs for every single system that's supported. But if you added ROMs to the system later on via FTP and you only wanted to update one system, what you would do is select the updated selected system option instead. Anyway, let's check out some emulators. For those that may not know, the original Xbox is powered by a single core 733 MHz Intel x86 processor and really has no business being talked about as a system that can be called an emulation box in 2019. But it handles most systems like an absolute champ, all the way up to the Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1, and even arcade emulation. XBNC Emustation is a real slick piece of software too, and makes things so seamless and easy to use. It also has support for many great systems from Japan like the Sharp X68000 and NEC PC98, and also many home computers like the Commodore 64 and Commodore Amiga. It makes the setup involved, especially with the Amiga, quite trivial, and almost everything supports and runs at 720p, and things look and feel great. Not bad for a $10 thrift store find. I should also mention, it's not just emulation. There's some fantastic homebrew and ports available for it too, that really make the system stand out, and that's one of the reasons why homebrew developers are still supporting the system even to this day. I did mention there was a second way to get emulators installed onto the system and that's via the app itself. As you can see there's an easy way to download and add new systems to the XBMC emustation software, but unfortunately this method, at least on the making of this video, did not work and returned an error message each time I tried it. Still, it doesn't take away from how awesome this software and emulation is on the original Xbox. I'm amazed every time I power on the system. It truly was ahead of its time in so many ways and that it's still a relevant and fantastic system 17 years later is a testament to Microsoft and the team behind the Xbox. So in 2019, the original Xbox is still an awesome homebrew and emulation device. It's been 17 years since the launch of the system and people are still very much active in the scene updating emulators, homebrew, soft mods, as well as the new XBMC emustation front end. That's awesome to see. So if you are thinking about getting into the original Xbox for the first time, or maybe revisiting it and you don't have a system, pick up a used one at a thrift store or a garage sale if you can find one cheap, and check out the amazing capabilities that the original Xbox has. I think you will not be disappointed. Well guys, I'm going to leave it here for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about what you saw, in the video or anything else, please leave a comment below. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.